Today we are going to talk about abnormal EEG in newborns and infants. Before we start, I want to be sure that you already have basic knowledge in EEG reading, including normal and abnormal adult EEG, as well as normal pediatric EEG. Knowing normal is the prerequisite to know abnormal. Here are some important concepts I would like to emphasize first. EEG is always an ancillary tool and must be used optimally. In order to achieve this, EEG should be properly performed by experienced technicians. An EEG as clean as possible, carefully studied and interpreted in the context of a well-described clinical information by experienced physicians. EEG should not be undervalued, but not overvalued either. Always look at the pros, perils, and pitfalls behind the EEG. Make sure that all the waves we are reading are within the brain. A skilled technician will eliminate the artifacts, and if not, mark them. This is especially true for children. More artifacts happen in children. Abnormal EEG consists of passive lack of normal patterns, indicating encephalopathy, and active appearance of abnormal pictures, which are grossly classified into epileptiform discharges and non-epileptiform. Beware that epileptiform discharges could be seen in non-epileptic children. Again, this is a characteristic in young population. Pediatric EEG covers the first 18 years of life, from newborn period to infancy, early childhood, preschooler, school, and adolescence. EEG patterns change developmentally in a predictable manner as children grow up. Neonatal EEG has very different clinical considerations for recording and interpretation, so we usually separate it from other ages, the newborn period and the age beyond. As you may know, a routine adult EEG records awake, a natural sleep, at least till stage 2 non-REM, and further provocative procedures after wake up. The sequences may vary, but after all, we try to gather all the EEG changes, both normal and abnormal, through different states to get a more comprehensive impression. For pediatric EEG, the principle is the same for children beyond newborn stage. But as you may know, you may expect younger children may not be cooperative. Sometimes we can only obtain a sleep EEG, even worse, a sedated sleep EEG, which is we always try to avoid. Today, we talk about this age group. They are in different periods, yet they are in a continuum or have a very immature brain very likely to develop seizures. I would like to review the normal neonatal EEG briefly. So different considerations and terms. It will go smoother in the later talk. Neonatal EEG requires the recognition of EEG changes from conceptional age less than 28 to 48 weeks. Conceptional age is gestational age plus chronological age, the age after birth. When they reach 37 weeks, they are terms, if not preterms. If a baby is born at the full term with GA 40 weeks, then CA 48 weeks will be chronological age of two months. Besides CA, which determine their behavioral state, that is awake or sleep, 
if sleep, active or quiet sleep. They may sleep for more than 16 hours a day. We can identify the awake state by eye opening and spontaneous movement of the limbs and body. Active sleep, REM stage, by closed eyes, intermittent periods of rapid eye movement, and irregular breathing, irregular respirations with small or large body movements. Quiet sleep, non-REM stage, by eye closure, absence of rapid eye movements, and scant body movements. We may need extracerebral electrodes to determine the state, like EKG, EOG, chin, and respiration leads. This table illustrates the changes of different states at each channel. At term, there is a full establish of stage differentiation. Active sleep with continuous background appears at CA 38, 32 weeks, quiet sleep at 34 weeks, and a more lucid awake EEG pattern at 37 weeks. Visual analysis of a neonatal EEG consists of these three components, background activity, background patterns, normal gravel elements, aka developmental background hallmarks, and EEG transient patterns. In background activity, in background patterns, we should check the continuity, synchrony, and symmetry. Amplitude determines the continuity. There are two discontinuous patterns, trace discontinue, trace alternant, and two continuous patterns, activity, activity mu yen, continuous slow wave sleep. For babies younger than 32 weeks, it is normal for the background to be discontinuous, called trace discontinue, TD. It consists of bursts of high amplitude waveforms of mixed frequencies separated by interburst intervals IVIs, of an amplitude less than 25 microvolt. Duration of the IVI is from a few seconds to over 30 seconds. Depending on CA, the younger, the longer of the IVI. As maturing, the amplitude of the IVI increases and its duration shortens. Once the amplitude reaches 25 microvolt, it is called trace alternate, TA, occurring between 34 to 36 weeks. So, TA has bursts of delta frequency activity with superimposed faster frequencies separated by IVIs of mixed frequencies with amplitudes between 25 to 50 microvolt. Activity mo yen is a continuous EEG pattern theta with intermixed delta activity and a lower amplitude of 25 to 50 microvolt. A low voltage irregular pattern appearing at wakefulness and active sleep. As the IVIs of the TA pattern shorten, the bursts develop high amplitude delta and theta activity. This activity eventually becomes continuous during the quiet sleep, or called high voltage slow, HVS. It appears by 36 weeks, constituting an odd background during the quiet sleep at 44 to 45 weeks. At term, the background activity during awake and active sleep is similar, whereas at quiet sleep, 
they are high voltage slow and TA. Here is the normal gravel elements, delta brushes, monorhythmic occipital delta activity, rhythmic occipital or temporal theta activity, central temporal delta activity, anterior slow dysrhythmia, ASD, and Ankosh from Talis EF. They are paracysonal and even spiky, so maybe misinterpreted. They appear at a certain period of time and will eventually outgrow and disappear. The simple presence or absence of spikes or sharp waves in newborn EEG usually does not designate the pattern as abnormal. They are sporad sporadic. Sporadic means random, here and there, now and then, and on different areas. They may still be present in quiet sleep at one week past term, then usually gone at eight weeks or two months. To sum it up, at 37 to 40 weeks, we see activity moyen or low voltage mixed frequency during wakefulness and active sleep. TA or a continuous slow wave sleep during quiet sleep. Delta brushes are still seen in quiet sleep. So are EF and ASD. Sporadic multifocal shock waves should be less frequent, less frequent, about two to three per hour at turn. At 41 to 44 weeks, activity moyen in wakefulness and AS, continuous slow waves in quiet sleep. TA should be gone. Delta brushes and multifocal shock waves disappear by 44 weeks. At term, 80% of sleep episodes begin with active sleep, which constitutes about 50% of the total sleep time. At 44 to 48 weeks, quiet sleep no longer has TA, but continuous slow wave sleep. Sleep spindles appear at this age. By 46 weeks, the majority of the sleep episodes begin with quiet sleep, which constitutes about 60% of total sleep time. The awake posterior dominant rhythm, PDR, first establishes at the age of 3 to 4 months of 3 to 4 hertz, 5 hertz at 5 months and six hertz at one year. No EEG drowsy pattern appears until six to eight weeks when onset of hypnagogic hypersynchrony coinciding with the time of PDR first present. Neonatal sleep onset REM subsides during two second or third months. Sleep spindle appear during second month, vertex sharp waves and K compresses usually occurred at five months of age. So this is a four-term baby boy, 11 day old, having seizures at day 10. This is a uh, longitudinal bipolar montage. The first four channels are left media array next four right media next left lateral array and right lateral array so left right left right you can see the continuous activity with mixed frequencies of variable amplitudes a newborn with ca 40 weeks a ta pattern with burst and interburst interval the IBI is not so flat 
with voltage exceeding 25 microvolt. A four-term, three-week-old three -week girl diagnosed as maple syrup, syrup urine disease, having seizures. This EEG shows the normal continuous background activity. There are spikes over bilateral frontal area, not like transient, too many to be regarded as normal. Three months old boy, rule out seizure disorder, a slip EEG without movement. You can see the slip spindles here. Can be asynchronous at this age. Six months old boy, a slip EEG with asynchronous slip spindle. Slip spindle can be asynchronous until age of 18 months. Same boy, onset of vertex sharp waves. This is longitudinal bipolar montage. If we change to CZ referential montage, we can see most electrodes are positive to CZ. So they uh, they have down, downward diffractions. The following three EEGs were from a eight-month-old boy who had seizures for three times since age of one month or in one day following vaccines. He finally was diagnosed as Dravet syndrome. In this page, we know he was awake with move, many movement artifacts. Our technician felt that he seems okay to proceed photostimulation. His EEG was unremarkable except photosensitivity, transient photoparasismal response of large solar waves with admixed spikes were seen. Here I also want to show you the beautiful post PDR around 4 to 5 hertz when he closed his eyes. It is not easy to get a cooperative awake EEG in infancy. These are the epileptic bone discharges under intermittent photostimulation. Here seems to be the driving response at 7, 7 hertz. I am not sure. This EEG shows an 11-month-old boy from arousal to awake PDR of 5 to 6 hertz. 